Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to work on our shoulders and biceps. So starting off with the greatest stretch, five repetitions on each side without fail. We have to get that dynamic stretching in. You can choose to do your own style of dynamic stretching if you if you prefer other dynamic stretches over this particular one. But I prefer this. This is my favorite. I'm going to do it always before starting up with my workout because it gives me a lot of mobility freedom it, at least and especially in my hips which are usually the ones which get very tight over the period of day either you're doing a standing or a seated job or work post completing my greatest stretch i move on to my mandatory deep squat basically hinge by pushing your glutes as far behind as possible and once your hamstrings are completely at a stretch you sit down by bending your knees into a deep squat and stay there for a few seconds hold on making sure you use your core muscles not to lose balance and post that we start with our working exercises now for working exercise i'm going to start off with uh, my favorite the ray delt races with the barbell three sets 20 repetitions like we have done in the last workout of our shoulder day. You may take up to 45 seconds or even 60 seconds of break. In between, you need not go extremely heavy. Choose a weight which you can control. As you can see, I'm able to control the weight as it comes down and I'm able to push it high up as much as possible. And still, I was able to get a good amount of contraction in my ray delts. So make sure you take a weight which you can control instead of it swinging too much down because if the weight gets heavier, you will be unable to lift it and it will swing down. Post completing the three sets, I moved on to ray delt crossovers. Now here you set up the cable cross machine at a high level. Take each end, basically the opposite ends into each hand and start Basic, uh, doing ray delt fries on a cable crossover machine make sure your hand movement is in a dagger manner where it's like you're pulling down two daggers to get the maximum amount of contraction on your ray delt if you still don't feel much connection try changing your hand height a little bit uh, try taking your hand a little bit around your body to get that contraction the amount of activation differs from person to person what works for me perfectly might not work for you perfectly. You need to do at least one set of trial and error to make sure you feel the maximum amount of contraction in your rate delt. Make sure you pull your arms as far behind as possible. Keep your elbows locked. Do not get your triceps activated and let the cables go just till the shoulder level, not too high up. Because if it's too high up and from there you start pulling it down, your lats might get involved a lot more than your ray delts. Post completing my ray delt work, I moved on to my friend delt work wherein I chose to do the barbell friend traces but with a bent elbow. Basically, starting position of your raises would be with a bent elbow and we'll keep it there itself. Now I have done two sets of these with 15 repetitions to start off with and then I use the pause and rest technique wherein I paused for a few seconds, got 5 more repetitions, paused again, 5 more repetitions and in such manner I got 20 additional repetitions out of it. This would demand a lot from your front shoulders as you can see I was getting tired I was going out of breath pretty quickly but kept on going to accumulate those 20 repetitions. I'm going to speed up the video because it's pretty self explanatory as you can see in the video how I was going about it taking the pauses in between resting it out and going for another 5 repetitions. So total I was able to get 15 plus 20 repetitions. Post completing my friend raises I moved on to the bus drivers again one of my favorites in terms of getting those friend delts to completely contract. Simply Set yourself on an inclined bench, inclined bench because it provides you a little bit of support to go into that inclined position and from there raise the plate as high up as possible. Keep the bar hole at your eye level and start driving the plate. 20 repetitions each 
side. So basically you'll rotate 20 times on each side and we'll do it twice with about 45 seconds rest in between. By now your friend delt should be fried and that's absolutely the objective. I hope the incline setup helps you a lot in achieving your reputations. You may go as fast or as quick as possible. Yes, the height of the plate might drop with as you reach your 20 repetitions, but that's absolutely fine. Now for the next lateral work, I moved on to lateral races, basically the, the mid delts. I started off with two sets of 15 repetitions, again using the pause reps, wherein I use the rest pause technique. After completing my 15 repetitions, I pause for a few seconds and then get five more reps out of it. Once done with five reps, again pause for a few seconds, try to get another five repetitions and in a similar fashion, go up to 20 repetitions. So 15 plus another 20 to fry out your side delts. Make sure you keep your elbows slightly bent and also bend a little bit forward as you can see in the video how I bend a little bit forward to not involve my traps a lot more to keep my focus completely on my side delts. The pause technique would pull every bit out of you and that's absolutely fine. Post completing my lateral races, I moved on to upright row. Now upright row, I don't prefer to do it on a bar because I am not very comfortable with doing it with a bar because of my internal rotation of the shoulders, the position in which it puts you and I feel a little bit of restriction while doing that particular exercise. So I prefer to either do it on a cable machine or with free dumbbells wherein I can still open my arms out a little bit more to get a lot more space in my shoulder joint. So for upright row, it's simply you hold the dumbbells in front of you and raise them as high as possible. Getting that again, the lateral delts a lot more involved and also a bit of ray delt action. Three sets, 20 repetitions with about 45 seconds rest in between. And that's it. We are done with our shoulder workout. Now we move on to our bicep part of the day wherein we are going to start with the high cable curls as usual, the one which we have done even the last time, three sets, 20 repetitions each hand, we go without break in between. Basically the break is while you're exercising one hand, the other arm is resting. So we switch from one arm to the other. It will be quite challenging. Make sure you take a weight which is good enough for you to last 20 repetitions, but at the same time, not so easy that you know, you can crank out 30 repetitions out of it. Take just about maybe 12 to 15 kilos and that should be heavy enough at the high cable curls. Remember with cable, the tension is constant. There's a constant pull on your biceps and the moment you position yourself away from the cable, like I'm doing here, wherein I've kept my body completely away from my bicep, your bicep is already at a stretch. So there's maximum contraction happening. So choose your weight wisely. Now, if you happen to fail, write about 15 repetitions on the final set like I did. No worries. Switch your arm, do 15 repetitions, switch back, complete the five repetitions, switch back, complete the five repetitions. And that's how we achieve the 20 repetitions. Even if we are not able to go all at a time, we can still get 15 plus 5, 15 plus 5. Again, no rest in between. As you can see, I wasn't taking any. Post completing my high cable curls, I moved on to the reverse grip barbell curls. Now for the reverse grip barbell curls, you don't want your forearms to be involved much. And kind of a cheat, I put my straps on so I don't have to hold the barbell really tight with my grip so that my forearms are not working much. And I had to simply raise the bar up in the reverse grip and get the maximum contraction out of the hammer curl method. And immediately after completing 10 repetitions, I moved on to the preacher curl setup and did from and I did few preacher curls. Now this is to completely exhaust the muscle of our biceps out. We can do three sets of these 
with 45 seconds rest in between. Now straps is optional. I understand if you don't have straps, you will still have to hold the bar and that might cause you a lot of forearm activation. You want to keep it at a minimum, so hold the bar as lightly as possible. But yes, at the same time, you want to get those 10 repetitions with a good challenging amount of weight. So straps and gloves can help you a little bit in performing this exercise, focusing completely on our bicep muscles without much of forearm activation. Remember, once you're done with the 10 repetitions, immediately place yourself on a preacher setup and start curling out as many repetitions as you can on a preacher setup. My biggest challenge here was my sore triceps from the last tricep workout while I was pressing my arms against the preacher setup. Once I have completed those, I moved on to a reverse grip concentration curls. Again, three sets, 20 repetitions. By no rest, I mean we'll be switching from one arm to the other without taking a break because while one arm is working, the other arm is resting. So I was able to get 20 repetitions in the first two sets, but by the time I reached my third set, I was completely exhausted and I was unable to curl anymore. So I was just about 15 or 16 repetitions there, lost with four repetitions, but I had enough blood and pump in my bicep that I couldn't push any more repetitions out of my bicep, so I let it be. Again, I'm using straps to not involve my forearms much in terms of gripping the dumbbell with my arm. Kind of a cheat, but does the job, helps me focus more on my bicep than get a lot of uh, forearm activation. Now, if you want your forearm to be trained a little bit, you want to involve your forearm a little bit, go ahead. Even if you don't have straps, don't use them. But if you don't have straps, try to hold on to the dumbbell a little bit with ease, not to grip it too hard. The moment you grip it too hard, you're going to activate all your grip muscles, which are your forearm muscles. And since it's a reverse grip concentration curl with internally rotated shoulder, you might get a lot more forearm activation than your bicep muscle. Post completing my bicep work, I moved on to my single exercise calf exercises. So I did calf raises on the leg press machine, three sets, 50 repetitions nonstop. So what I have done is basically I have done an explosive set of 50 or at least try to get 50 repetitions on the leg press machine. The way I placed my feet is as you can see on the right side with my toes pointing each other. So legs were pretty close, but the toes were pointing each other and I got the 50 repetitions out of three sets each. Now, post completing my calf work, we end off with the vertical hang. Best way to decompress our shoulder, work our forearms, stretch our biceps, one exercise to rule them all. So thank you so much for joining me. If you did like the video, please do drop a like. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Any feedback in the comment section is definitely appreciated. Make sure you perform the vertical hang to decompress the shoulder. If you are tired or fatigued, you can still decompress your shoulder by doing the 10 circles while bending over, which I have done in my previous videos. Decompression is important after putting our shoulders through a lot of pressure, pushing motions, and also a little bit of forearm work, a little bit of stretch for our biceps. It's a long, good and long way to go. Thank you so much again for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.